Today we're going to talk to Jesse about his beautiful lawn. So let's get started. Hello, welcome back to My Green Lawn. Today we have Jesse from Lawn Life. Hey Jesse. How you doing, nice man? Nice to meet you, man. So can we give me a little bit of a uh, explanation of what happened here because you just had regular grass like everybody else right yeah so i started with just your normal sod and i thought hey i'm gonna start real mowing this thing and yep. it was a process to bring it down i actually made a lot of mistakes <laughs> my first time real mowing i was scalping it over and over and over and that's not the way to do it right. to be honest <laughs> um you're supposed to go super low and then let it grow out a little bit and then once that crown starts growing out, sure, you're gonna actually going to be able to start real mowing and it'll look nice. I didn't do that, so don't but make you, that mistake. But you had probably, what, tall fescue, Kentucky bluegrass, uh, perennial ryegrass mix? I think it was mostly Kentucky because I had oh. a lot of spreading. Sure. So I was pretty confident with that, but I just brought it down and said F it, and <laughs> I tried it out, and yep. yeah, it ended up working out. It, my lawn was super nice before I did my renovation. like you'd walk by and people would comment all the time, but I just wanted a darker green. I didn't want all the splotchiness around. So then Jesse took the brave move of destroying his yard, right? Yeah, and <laughs> it was a very scary thing, <laughs> to right. be honest. That's what I'm nervous about doing to mine. Yeah, uh, my wife was not happy with me at all. So <laughs> I killed the whole entire thing and I put a little sign out there so my neighbors, uh, didn't ask me questions all the time. And we'll post a picture of that sign in here somewhere so you can see a sign. Yeah, it, 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 it was pretty funny. I got a lot of people commented on the sign and not too many people ask questions because that sign was out there. Right, I love it. You know, I love it. You were going to donate that sign to me and I think you should keep it. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, the line, so I'm assuming you're doing uh, double wide stripes. Yeah, so I, I've been burning in stripes all year, just double wide with uh, Green Master 1000. So I think they're... 22 inches and then yeah just double wides and looks fantastic the only problem with burning stripes in is i'm starting to get lumps like you know oh, sure on a gravel on a gravel uh road when you drive over it non-stop you get those waves and yep. bumps in it that's basically what's happening right now i need to switch up my pattern okay so you haven't done that this year at all switched up oh, i've switched it up a little bit but not as much as i probably should have okay so I'm, I'm i'm paying the price right now i'm gonna I'm going to put some sand down this fall and level, try leveling some things out. But yeah, I need to switch okay. the pattern up. So just to go back real quick to let everybody know how much work this was. So was your yard lawn pretty flat as it was before you started or did you, did you have to do a lot of leveling? It was pretty flat for the most part, but I think that's a very big misconception for people with real mowing is they're so nervous about how bumpy their lawn is. And I took down my back and it is insanely bumpy back there. Okay. And I real mowed back there for a little bit. I scalped probably in two or three spots, but it, I was really scared. Not as bad as you think. Right. So it, if your lawn's a little on level, honestly, you, you don't have to be that scared about it. Sure. It, the, the real mower is so forgiving. Okay. Compared to a rotary with, with those tires, like hit those dips. Right. You're scalping all the time. Yeah. With that back uh, drum rolling you're not going to get scalping like you do with a sure. rotary. So it, it's not as bad as you would think. The only way of telling is just to do it and you can fix your scalp areas, right? Right. And that's the thing. It's a lot of people say this is just grass. It's going to grow back. I promise you it takes a ton to kill your grass. So if you want to go in real mow and you're scalp it down, it's, and you're not happy with it. I promise it's going to come back. Right. You, you just got to wait. It's very scary doing it the first time. Right. Like I didn't want, <laughs> I was super nervous, but once you start doing it, no, but the biggest pain with the real mowers is maintenance. Uh, getting it, uh, get a grind on it every year, getting replacing the bed knife. It's so hard to do it by yourself. Sure. You need to contact a golf course and try finding someone to do it for you if you're not that tech savvy or mechanically savvy. You, are say. you doing it yourself? Or no, you I'm not. I, I, I have a couple contacts. You ever try one of the McLean's? Have you liked those? or? So Andy, the guy that you interviewed earlier, yep. um, he let me use his McLean. Oh, he said you brought it right back. Oh, yeah. But I, it scalped the <laughs> hell out of the grass. And it wasn't, oh, did it? Yeah. I was like, I went three feet and, no, nope, put it back in the car. <laughs> <laughs> See, Andy? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, he said he, you borrowed the mower and you brought it right back. Yeah. But, but uh, no, he, he let me borrow his uh, Sunjo Dethatcher, and that is the most awesome machine that I've ever used in my life. Honestly, it's so fun to use. It's right a, it was electric or battery operated? It is electric. That's the only thing that's 
that stinks about it. You're, yeah. You're constantly moving that cord out of the way. But honestly, that thing is awesome. Yeah, like, for being a cheap unit. I mean, I actually had one before I bought the big one I've got. Yep. They, they are pretty cool for a cheap little unit. Yeah. I mean, I think they were just on sale in Walmart for 90 bucks. We didn't talk about the cultivar yet. So we, you're talking, we have a Kentucky bluegrass, but you told me about the mix. Can you tell me again? Yeah, so I decided to go with a 100% Kentucky bluegrass lawn. I didn't want any rye or fescue in there. I, like, I love the spreading capabilities, um, but my biggest thing that I wanted 100% with this lawn is dark green. Yep. So I hunted out the darkest cultivars I could find. So I went with Mazama, Everest, and Blue Bank. I'm a little mad that I went with the Blue Bank because it's not as dark as the Everest and the Mazama. Those okay. two mix very well. They both have their positives and negatives. Um, Everest, it grows very slow, which is nice for the low cut lawn, and it's super dark. Okay. Mazama grows a little faster, but it's the same exact color. Blue Bank has a lot more disease resistance. It doesn't need as much water. So okay. That's kind of why I went with it, but it, it has more of a blue tint, but not as dark green as the other two. Okay. So did you, is this something that you just bought all three separate seeds and mixed them yourself or did, what did you do? So I got two of the cultivars from Twin City Seed, um, the Everest and the Mazama, and they just gave me them separate. And then I bought the Blue Bank from a different contractor. And I ended up putting them in a five gallon bucket and I was just shaking the hell out of them. Sure. Okay. Just mixing them as much as I could. And then I put them in a hand spreader and spread it. Okay. And then you, I'm assuming on top of that, you put down, just like regular seeding, you probably put the starter fertilizer down and... Yep, so I went with the starter fert. I actually brought in uh, a topsoil. I brought in 50% sand, 50% black dirt. Put that on top to level it out because as long as I'm tearing everything up, you might as well do mm -hmm. some leveling. Put that down, did my tenacity on top of that, and I still had a butt ton of weeds coming. Did you really? Oh, man. It, so many... The, I haven't had a chance to even put down any weed killer this year. So everything that you see here is just been kind of what it was. And I had a ton of Poetriv come in, which, oh, really? which was my biggest fear doing a renovation. Mm -hmm. Poetriv, I mean, once you get Poetriv, you're done, I feel it's, like. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, I found it. It's like I, I saw them popping up everywhere, and I would just take a screwdriver, pop them out, pop them out, pop them out everywhere I saw them. And right now, crossing my fingers, there's no poetry in here anymore. Well, because this is a, uh, a slow slow to germinate seed, right? 21 days, at least 21 days? So I started getting germination after about eight days, but it wasn't coming in thick by any means. Sure. You started seeing something in eight days? Yeah, so yeah, we had some green come up in eight days, but then for it to really start filling in, it took about 21 yeah. days. Well, I days. wonder if it was one of the cultivars over the other that you're actually seeing germinate. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I, I put test plots in my backyard, and I would recommend this for anyone that does a renovation. I would 100% do test plots wherever you're go, whatever you decide to renovate with. That's a with. good idea, yeah. Make a little test plot in your backyard or right. care, part of your yard that you don't care about to see if you actually want that grass in your lawn. Sure. Who knows, in your area, it just might not thrive well in your soil. Like, so did you get uh, a small amount of each one to yeah, begin with? So I bought little samples from oh, um, okay. uh, Seed Superstore. Okay. So the, you can buy a little four ounce samples and that's all you need. Just that's a good idea. Spread it in, yeah. Take take that advice. That's a really good idea. I'm mowing once every two to three days, okay. sometimes every four days, and PGR is a lifesaver for me. Plant growth regulator. Yeah. When you're mowing this low, you need to put it on yeah. because I my my lawn actually came into rebound a couple of days ago and it was growing like half inch every day. I'm just like, oh my god, I can't keep up. Oh. Because if you if you start scalping this stuff, it's gonna look bad. It, yep, yep, because you're gonna you're gonna sculpt it down to the crown, right? Exactly. And, and once you get down to that crown, it, yeah. it doesn't like that. No. So, but you know, I even thought about using the uh, plant regular a growth regulator on in my yard, just so I wouldn't have to cut so often. But I was reading some stuff on it, and I was just a little nervous about using the using the product. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a tip here from my personal experience with long grass. It works great with. It actually darkens your grass, makes it really dark, <laughs> which is awesome. And the thing is. With tall grass, you you might have to mow only once a week. The only thing that you have to be a little skeptical, or not skeptical, the only thing that you have to be a little nervous about is the first time you put it down, use a half rate. Because if you use the full rate that it says on the bottle, okay. it's going to turn brown. And oh. it's going to stun its growth. It's going to oh. look really bad, and you're really? going to be really mad at yourself. You won't oh. ever use it See, again. I would not know that. Yes, use half rate first. Your grass needs to get used to it. 
Okay. So you just kind of warm it up, say, here you go. Here's a little PGR grass, get a taste of it. it you're not going to probably see the dark grass or too much growth regulating, regulating first right away. Time. But after that first time you put it down, the next time you put it down, that's when you're going to get the results. Are you putting it down? So this is not a one application per season no. deal. No, this is monthly. So I put it down every two weeks. Oh. Um, there's this thing called GDD. There's, uh, I'll, we'll link it in the description for you guys. It's called GDG uh, growth degree days. Basically what it tells you is with your weather, how hot it is, how much it rains, it'll tell you how long it's gonna last for how gotcha. much you put down. Okay. Basically does the calculations for you. Sure. But if you just wanna make it really simple, put it down every two weeks, every three weeks. You'll know when it stops because that grass is going to like boom, bounce sure. right back. Does the color stay? One, uh, the color kind it goes away a little bit, but you're going to notice the growth before the color disappears. Gotcha. Okay. You, you trust me. You're going to know once that thing pops. So back. half application first time, then yep. you can go full application after that. Yes. Hmm. And right. I slowly increase it. So I use milliliters. Also, it, the, the bottle rate tells you to go by ounces. It's, when you're measuring in ounces, it's so hard to get an exact amount. So I do milliliters per thousand. Okay. You get these little syringes off Amazon, just suck it up. And yeah. Suck, just convert the ounces to milliliters, put it in your sprayer. Sure. Way more accurate because yep. a little bit of that stuff goes so far. Okay. Good news. Something else we can learn from Jesse here. So if you're planning on using a uh, plant growth regulator, follow his advice. And if you've never used it before, go half rate. So Jesse, just tell me real quick, uh, how, how does this lawn handle the heat? So it's a big myth actually to a lot of people that is if you cut your lawn very, very short, you're gonna have to deal with heat stress and it's just basically gonna burn out. And that's just not true because the more you cut your lawn short, like very short, like I do, this is three quarters of an inch, the more you train your grass to not grow up, but vertically. And what happens when your grass grows vertically is it's covering the soil. And if you were to come down here and look, you can't see dirt okay, nah, you can't in see my lawn dirt. at all. I mean, you have to really spread it. In a tall lawn, if you were to spread the grass leaves apart, you could see dirt down there. Yep, so. I mean, I can dig down and see my dirt. Yep, so that's, that's the one th good thing about the short lawn is it covers up the soil really well. The bad thing, obviously, is that it's very, it, you're very close to the soil layer, so it's still getting that heat. Right. If you look around at all my neighbors, they all have irrigation, they all have long grass, and their lawn is like almost burnt out right now. Right. We're going I, through a drought here in Minnesota. And I see that everywhere. Yeah, and I don't water that much more than my neighbors, I promise you. <laughs> it's, I'm pretty sure the leaves covering the soil layer is what's helping Helps me Helps it. No, I mean, and, and I'm cutting my lawn at three and three quarter right now. Some of my customers I'm cutting at three and a half. It just depends, but three and three quarter for me and I mean, so I'm shading my soil really well. So then that's the problem guys that we don't want to do. If we cut our lawns too short, if we're going to be cutting our lawns at two inches or two and a half inches and we don't have the proper lawn or the, we're not doing it right we're, to our tall fescue or whatever, you cut it that short and on these hot days, that sun's going to heat up that soil, especially if your lawn's not thicker or your lawn's not thick. It's going to heat up that soil and you're heating up the soil is going to heat up the roots and your lawn's roots once the soil temperature reach about 80 degrees or 83 degrees your roots will start to die yeah and by no means am i telling people to go out there and start cutting their grass at five eighths of an inch in the middle right. of summer because this is a process to get it this thick exactly so i'm not telling you guys go out there and start scalping your lawn down to an inch <laughs> and everything's going to be fine and right. you don't have to water much that is not what i'm <laughs> saying this is you have to train your grass to grow like yep. this so i mean if you want to do what he says you know like he cut his regular lawn down uh but he needed to do it slowly and it's something i probably wouldn't recommend in the heat of summer no that's doing. what i was just going to say do not do this in the middle of summer do right. not try going short in the middle of summer you definitely need to do it either at the beginning of spring yep or in fall yep. because those are the when cool season grasses bounce back the best. Yep, and, and we need thriving. to tell people that because we don't know somebody might be thinking something different. So hey, Jesse, thanks again for uh, having me over here. Yeah, I appreciate you Appreciate out, your man. time. It's a beautiful lawn. Thanks for giving us the insights on everything that happens here. If you guys haven't already subscribed to Jesse's channel, go ahead and get over to uh, Lawn Life and subscribe. His information will be down below. Yeah, guys. Give this guy a, a subscribe because he, he knows what he's talking about. He, he's like a mad scientist when it comes to the soil. And we were yeah. talking earlier before we were filming, and, yeah, he really knows his stuff. So 
Yeah, so I appreciate that. So I appreciate your support and I appreciate all you all support uh, very much. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Show us some love. And with that, I'll see you in the green. You guys have a, a great day. Take care.